Now next on our program is Brother Henschel, a brother that's well known to all of us and who has worked with us for many years. He's going to speak to us on the subject, Guard Your Christian Trust, Brother Henschel. This beautiful trust, guard through the Holy Spirit which is dwelling in us. These are the words of the Apostle Paul to his associate minister, Timothy. What is a trust? Of what trust was Paul writing? A trust is that which has been committed to one's care for profitable use, something given to him for safekeeping, for which an account has to be rendered. Something given in confidence to be used for the benefit of another is a trust. It is a duty incumbent on one, something which is, one is bound in duty and honor to keep inviolate. Therefore, a trust is not to be taken lightly. As we now consider information in the two epistles to Timothy, we shall see clearly that Timothy was given a beautiful trust to guard. What trust? Paul said, Keep holding the pattern of healthful words which you heard from me with the faith and love that are in connection with Christ Jesus. Therefore, this trust was similar to what Paul himself had. The pattern came from Paul. Paul had previously written about the glorious good news of the happy God with which I was entrusted. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who delegated power to me because he considered me trustworthy by assigning me to a ministry. Here Paul made it clear. The ministry is a sacred trust. Indeed, the greatest honor that could be given to any man is to hold and guard this beautiful trust. We are ambassadors substituting for Christ as though God were making entreaty through us. Let us not forget our position. The honor is great. It is accompanied by great responsibility. It was so for the Apostle Paul. It was so for Timothy. And today it is so for all Christians, including us. When one is given much, more is required of him. The ministry is not to be taken lightly. We must look at it seriously, recognize what a precious treasure it is. The ministry sparkles like a beautifully cut diamond. It has many sides or facets. Many things go to make up the ministry, and each one is to be guarded as a valued part of the great treasure which the ministry truly is. Timothy was an assistant to Paul in the ministry. He had many obligations under the sacred trust. It's good for us to know what some of these included. Some Christians do many of the same things. All Christians do some of them. Each one has his assigned place in the organization. A minister must prepare himself. His aim must be in the right direction for success. Timothy was told, be training yourself with godly devotion as your aim. Devotion is to be learned. Bodily training must be learned, and it's beneficial for a little bit. But godly devotion is beneficial for all things, as it holds promise of the life now and that which is to come. To be fit, an athlete concentrates on his training. Godly devotion can be learned, too, when one avoids having his attention distracted from what he is doing. In the ministry, you must pay constant attention to yourself and to your teaching. Stay by these things. Taking only occasional interest in these things would not lead Timothy to success. Constant attention is a requirement. The trusted minister is told, do your utmost to present yourself approved to God, a workman with nothing to be ashamed of, handling the word of truth aright. We must keep on acquiring power in the undeserved kindness that is in connection with Christ Jesus. This is spiritual power, essential to the success of guarding the Christian trust. 
A minister must grow spiritually, learn and stick to the right doctrine. As the minister is equipped to help others to stick to right doctrine, he will, like Timothy, be able to tell certain ones not to teach different doctrine, nor pay attention to false stories and genealogies which end up in nothing, but which furnish questions for research rather than a dispensing of anything by God in connection with faith. By training himself in godly devotion and learning right doctrine, the minister guards his trust. He does not become embroiled in any fight about words, a thing of no usefulness at all because it overturns those listening. Guard what is laid up in trust with you, turning away from the empty speeches that violate what is holy and from the contradictions of the falsely called knowledge. Timothy was shown another facet in this gem of the ministry. Preach the word. Be at it urgently in favorable season, in troublesome season. The healthful words that Timothy had learned from Paul were to be passed on to others. From house to house and publicly, Paul had set the example in preaching. For Timothy, too, it was urgent. It must be done, whether conditions were favorable or not. Even in times of persecution, a minister feels his obligation to be teaching others what he has learned. Others must be built up in the ministry, just as Paul told Timothy, the things you heard from me with the support of many witnesses, these things commit to faithful men who in turn will be adequately qualified to teach others. Once he has started, the Christian must go on teaching these things and giving these exhortations. This truth is not for ourselves only. This is said to all who know something about the truth, whether little or much. The truth is given to us as a trust to be used for the benefit of others. And an account must be rendered to the owner of the truth, the source of all truth in the heavens, Jehovah. Under the giver of truth, we are trained our minds are shaped and molded by him so that we can recognize what is good for the upbuilding of others. The truth constitutes healthful words. By holding to the truth, we keep spiritually healthy. That which is misleading, harmful, untrue is to be avoided. We can help our brothers by discussing with them the upbuilding things of God's word of truth. The scriptures contain the best advice in the whole world. By giving these advices to the brothers, you will be a right kind of minister of Christ Jesus, one nourished with the words of the faith and with the right teaching that you have followed closely. So we see that to be a right kind of minister, we must be nourished and built up on the words of faith. We must take the ministry seriously partaking of the right teaching and following it closely. Are you doing this? Do you take the ministry seriously? Is it really the most important thing in your life? Are you nourishing yourself with the words of the faith? Or do you pass over Bible study and watch our study superficially, not equipping yourself to give good advice to others? Many organizational matters required the attention of willing minister Timothy besides the enforcing of right teaching or seeing that proper doctrine was held to by the brothers. The mature minister willingly takes on organizational responsibilities. Under Paul's direction, Timothy participated in the laying on of hands. This meant making theocratic appointments as the society now does. Only the right kind of ministers were to be appointed in the congregation. That required careful consideration. Never lay your hands hastily on any man. Before one can be appointed as a servant in the congregation, he must meet the requirements. These requirements Paul outlined for Timothy in the third chapter, verses 1 to 13. And these same requirements are looked for in ministers appointed in modern times in Jehovah's organization as the society discharges its responsibility in this respect. Today, the society delegates authority to some ministers, such as the branch servants, to make appointments in the theocratic organization. And these appointments are always made in accord with the advice of the scriptures, 
never hastily. And those making the appointments must be examples to those so that they will meet the qualifications of servants just as Timothy was. Timothy's responsibilities did not end there. The clean organization is what pleases God. A guard must be maintained so the organization or congregation would not become corrupt. Wrongdoing could not be winked at or overlooked. The overseer must reprove before all onlookers, persons who practice sin, that the rest also may have fear. Surely it was unpleasant to encounter sin in any congregation and to have to give reproof. But the responsibility could not be sidestepped by God's minister. The reproof was given after having a hearing, as Paul instructed, do not admit an accusation against an older man except only on the evidence of two or three witnesses. Timothy took on this responsibility too for the sake of the theocratic organization. Similar functions are to be performed by many ministers in God's New World Society today. Another duty in the Christian congregation fell upon Timothy, and that was to clarify the position of woman in the congregation and to see that proper organization was maintained. He must also look after the interest of the widows in the congregation and see that provision was made for them. He must decide which ones were worthy of the help of the congregation. In dealing with organizational matters, the minister may run up against individuals who don't wish to follow theocratic instruction from Almighty God. The minister must keep his faculties under control and deal tactfully and kindly with patience, long-suffering, and the art of teaching. A slave of the Lord does not need to fight, but needs to be tactful toward all, qualified to teach, keeping himself restrained under evil instructing with mildness those not favorably disposed. And Timothy gladly took on all of this load and more, and ministers today must be disposed to do likewise when called upon by Jehovah to do so. Timothy was a young man, but he was made wise by the word of God given to him through Paul. In the congregation, he encountered many older brothers, the older ones in the congregation are worthy of the respect of everyone. Many have literally worn themselves out physically in the service of Jehovah. In their older years, they merit the respect of the youths, especially so those who are taking a good lead in the service. Let the older men who preside in a right way be reckoned worthy of double honor, especially those who are working hard in speaking and teaching. Do not severely criticize an older man. To the contrary, entreat him as a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters with all chasteness. So the scriptures are clear. The youth who now come to associate with a New World Society must learn respect for the theocratic organization and respect for the older brothers and sisters in the organization and the association of all should be above reproach, without hypocrisy, with genuine Christian love. Timothy learned from the older minister, Paul, and he gained faith from association with his grandmother, Lois, and his mother, Eunice. The youth today among Jehovah's Witnesses do well to follow a similar course, learning the faith through their parents with due respect and pursuing a course of ministry similar to that undertaken by Timothy. The time to begin the ministry is when you are young or as soon as you hear the truth. It is wise to remember the Creator in the days of your youth, and as you grow in knowledge, faith, and privileges of service, then let nothing stumble you. 1 Timothy 5 shows that all kinds of people, young and old, men and women, are employed in the ministry. Every one of you can be useful. Yes, even children or older feeble ones. Frequent cases of sickness did not make the youthful Timothy quit. And so with you, be patient with yourself, remembering that you're not perfect. Do your best. If you are young, probably you've not had time to study all of the things published on Jehovah's Purposes. 
but you have a place in the service of God too. And let no man ever look down on your youth. On the contrary, become an example to the faithful ones in speaking, in conduct, in love, in faith, in chasteness. We are happy to see that today there are many youthful ones associated with a New World Society who have become such examples to the faithful ones. Part of guarding your ministry is watching your behavior. The ministry can be lost by you if you don't conduct yourself properly. God's word gives us the necessary instruction. Timothy read in Paul's letter, I am writing you these things that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the household of God. The uninstructed youth often causes trouble in a household by pursuing material things, selfish desires. He does not make a mature evaluation of spiritual things. One must guard his Christian ministry by shunning the desires that spring from spiritual immaturity. Flee from the desires incidental to youth, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, along with those who call upon the Lord out of a clean heart. Right conduct will result from studying God's word and from seeking good association in the congregation, association with those who are conscientiously devoted to Jehovah's service. If someone in the congregation shows spiritual immaturity by following a course of misconduct, rather than join in such misconduct, seek a good association with others. As Paul said, neither be a sharer in the sins of others. Preserve yourself pure. For your own good, avoid troublemakers. They had some in the early Christian congregations, and they sometimes show themselves in our times too. Paul wrote Timothy about Alexander the coppersmith. You too be on guard against such. Any who resist God's word or who lead others into worldliness are not good company. They're not going to help you improve your conduct in the household of God. Walk uprightly and let no evildoers upset your spiritual balance. We were warned that some will turn their ears away from the truth. You, though, keep your balance in all things. Thoroughly accomplish your ministry. We're in the midst of a great spiritual warfare. Our real enemies are the invisible demon hosts. They know they have a short time and they would like to destroy all of Jehovah's servants. Just as Timothy did, so we must go on waging the right warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. With faith and a good conscience, we'll keep the ministry in the first place in our lives, and that's where it belongs. Fight as the right kind of soldier of Christ Jesus, not becoming sidetracked by any involvements with this world. No man serving as a soldier involves himself in the commercial businesses of life in order that he may meet the approval of the one who enrolled him as a soldier. As long as we follow the instructions of our commander Christ Jesus, we are certain to succeed in the ministry, and we are assured, moreover, if anyone contends even in the games, he is not crowned unless he is contended according to the rules. Thus we see that we must pay attention by being alert to the rules of spiritual warfare. Only then shall we successfully guard our Christian ministry. Guarding the ministry is not entirely on our own. We may never think that we can do this work on our own, but we must seek the one who has given us the trust. He will help us. Prayer is required and emphasized at 1 Timothy chapter 2. It's good for us to pray when we wake up in the morning, before we partake of spiritual or material food, before we go to bed at night, and before we undertake special privileges or activities in the ministry. Prayer is a great privilege. In many circumstances we can pray, and we should never underestimate the power of prayer. It's another evidence to us of our strong faith. When we go into our room and privately petition Jehovah, 
It's because we believe in him. We have faith in God. There couldn't be any other reason. We're not trying to appear before men to be very religious. We believe in Jehovah, and we know that Jehovah will help us in our times of trial. The Christian trust must be guarded in times of suffering. Paul wrote, Take your part in suffering evil. Remember that Christ Jesus was raised up from the dead and was of David's seed, according to the good news I preach, and in connection with which I am suffering evil to the point of prison bonds as an evildoer. Nevertheless, the word of God is not bound. It is a great honor to suffer for the Christian ministry, and we must not drop our guard when trials come. Let us glory in the suffering that comes to us as Christians, for it is a privilege. Remember, other people in this world suffer much for unworthy things. Suffering for the ministry works out endurance, and endurance we need for faithful trusteeship. It's as much a part of our ministry as it was Paul's who exclaimed, on this account I go on enduring all things for the sake of the chosen ones. They, too, may obtain the salvation that is in union with Christ Jesus. If we go on enduring, we shall also rule together as kings. In these final days of the existence of Satan's system of things, great reproach comes upon those in the ministry of Christ Jesus. Many brothers are imprisoned for their integrity, just as the Apostle Paul was when he wrote 2 Timothy. It is a great honor to be associated with faithful brothers who stand for the principles of God's word, for righteousness, even though they're reproached by godless communistic persecutors, by religious leaders, or by evil men. Satan would like to discourage us in the ministry, inducing us to avoid the reproach that comes through being connected with persecuted brothers. But we are not going to bow before this satanic snare. For God gave us not a spirit of cowardice, but that of power and love and of soundness of mind. Therefore, do not become ashamed of the witness about our Lord, neither of Paul, a prisoner for his sake, but take your part in suffering evil for the good news according to the power of God. We are proud to be associates of the persecuted Christ Jesus, the Apostle Paul, and the thousands of our brothers imprisoned throughout the world in these evil days, aren't we? And we, too, shall guard our Christianity and the ministry, and we're determined to do so through whatever approach or imprisonment may come our way by the help of Jehovah God. Undaunted and undiscouraged we shall be, even if some quit the ministry under the persecution. We shall go on. Paul told Timothy, all the men in the province of Asia have turned away from me. Some men have deviated from the truth. While some may fall away, many others are faithful. How we rejoice today that many thousands have been added to the New World Society. We rejoice and give thanks to Jehovah that he has given us so many happy companions in the ministry. We're grateful that we have learned to live in godly devotion, and we're content in the ministry and can say along with Paul, to be sure it is a means of great gain, this godly devotion, along with self-sufficiency. For we brought nothing into the world, neither can we carry anything out. So having sustenance and covering, we shall be content with these things. However, those who are determined to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and many senseless and hurtful desires which plunge men into destruction and ruin. Our ministry is not for selfish gain. We guard our ministry by erasing all selfishness. It is a treasure valued as an instrument for the praise of Jehovah's name and a means of treasuring up for ourselves a right foundation for the future, the real life. This look that we have taken at the ministerial responsibilities of Timothy should make all of us today appreciate the ministry all the more, 
this gem of many facets which we hold in trust before Jehovah. It's a precious treasure. Each part of it reflects light in some way to the praise of Jehovah. We're assembled here today in the presence of our God as a group of his servants dedicated to his service. The dedication that each one has made is real and lasting. Now we must be serious about it, willing, ready to do all that we're called upon to perform under the trust just as Timothy was. Jehovah expects us to do something with the treasure that he has entrusted to us. Under the King Christ Jesus, each of us has been given a responsibility. We have a wonderful, close, intimate relationship with Christ and God as stewards of Jehovah's goods, and we're expected to increase what is committed to us. We're part of a vast worldwide organization of praises of Jehovah, the New World Society. And this New World Society is growing very quickly now. We see it. From every land and every class of people come forth thousands of new praisers each month. They need someone more mature than they are to help them. What are we doing about it? Are we accepting responsibilities in line with the dedication we have made? Are we equipped to give them spiritual advice and comfort? Do we minister to them, putting aside our own desires? Do we give our full support to the New World Society, setting a fine example for our new brothers and sisters? Now, as never before in the history of Jehovah's servants, there's a need for mature brothers and sisters who will take the lead in the ministry and assist others in the way of true worship. The other sheep are coming like flocks of doves. Who is going to help them? We are under the direction of the king. There's a great work to be done, and we have been given the trust. We're not pointing to others and saying, let them do it, but let us show we are stewards worthy of it. Our actions will speak, telling what we are doing. Let a man so appraise us as being subordinates of Christ and stewards of the sacred secrets of God. What is looked for in stewards is for a man to be found faithful. As we are today, let us always be grateful for the beautiful trust Jehovah has committed into our hands. Let us show appreciation for the confidence and honor that Jehovah has placed in us, considering us trustworthy by assigning us to a ministry. My brothers, keep active in the ministry. This beautiful trust guard through Holy Spirit which is dwelling in us. Thank you, Brother Henschel. We do appreciate the attention of Jehovah God in providing such information and counsel for our help.